All right, Foot Clan, your final week before the fantasy playoffs. We've got all the waiver decisions, drop decisions. We're going to talk about Carson Wentz and some streaming options as well. Don't miss today's show. Take clock. Hey, what's up? This is Justice Hill from the Baltimore Ravens, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Excited to be with you. Tuesday, November 26th, it's Megalodon Eve. Oh, 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 I gotta get to bed early tonight to have energy for Megalodon tomorrow. <laughs> you kind of trailed off at the end. Yeah, I was running out of steam. <laughs> Pretty tired today. I really <laughs> need to get to bed early. Uh, right after the show, Jay, you can go, <laughs> you can go down. Welcome in, waiver show today, getting into week 13. Hopefully you had a successful week 12, a.k.a. you had Lamar Jackson Ooh. on your roster. Hard to put into words how impressive that performance was last night. Finally, uh, there was a chance to go 7-for-7 seven seven on touchdown drives when he was finally stopped from his uh, – Absolute takeover of the Rams and the league. It's incredible that a team can run for what it, whatever it was, seven to nine yards of carry when the opposing defense knows you're going to run on every play. That can't feel good, especially at Wade Phillips' age. Can't feel good. Oof. But impressive performance last night. What were your takeaways from that game? Uh, man, I mean, you, you've got obvious takeaways on both sides of the ball that are completely opposite, right? You, how the, the struggles of the Rams offense and the incredible fantasy relevance of the Baltimore Ravens offense. Uh, I guess you start with Baltimore side, Lamar Jackson right now. Everybody who has Lamar Jackson is playoff bound, right? The, like, right. The, I've never – I'm yet to see a Lamar Jackson roster that is – struggling in fantasy right now because he's the he's the exact golden chip that you look for in a draft he was a late round guy you, you weren't paying up for Pat Mahomes you go oh well I thought quarterbacks don't. no grab the late quarterback that's going to explode and if you've got Lamar Jackson you're doing well and his playoff schedule in weeks 15 and 16 are it's juicy ridiculous was it the Jets and Cleveland Cleveland fantastic so uh, you're happy if you've got Lamar Jackson, obviously. Marquise Hollywood Brown looked like he's going to be the real deal going forward. He's recovered from his ankle injury that's been keeping him off the field a lot over the last month. Mark Ingram, the running game. I mean, what? 15, Willie Sneed. Just like, Mark <laughs> Ingram was 15 for 111 in a rushing touchdown. He also caught a touchdown as well. Yeah, and then on the other side, six carries for Todd Gurley. Was Robert that, Woods, twenty-two yards. Yes, correct. Except you got to take three of those yards away because I believe he had negative three receiving yards. So that's oh, that's yep, good. That's, that's true. It, you know, before the show, Al Borland was talking about one of his leagues how he has Brandon Cooks, Robert Woods, and Cooper Cup all on one roster. That seemed and like it was going to work out. It did, and and but one of the things we were saying before the show was just the idea that. Look, normally you're not prescribing the acquisition of three wide receivers on one roster. There is one way that that works, and that works if you have the best or a top three offense in football, the pa yards passing are coming. offense, and the, the, the touchdowns are coming, the fantasy points are But That was last year. I mean, that's what you had last year. I believe it's uh, it was one calendar year from the 54-51 Monday Night Football Rams over Chiefs extravaganza and yeah it's autopilot then with those players what now a, you're distributing 212 passing yards across three players yeah one looks, of the it looks so difficult too like everything it, it felt like every pass that jared goff had to complete i, I mean 
aside from garbage time, it just it was an uphill struggle for him to find someone to open without taking a hit. Like we're talking about fantasy implications of I would be just as excited if I have the Baltimore Ravens DST because they are absolutely manhandling people and their offense puts that other offense in a really terrible position, which, I mean, that's exactly what you want. You want your defense with a lead so they can go get sacks, create turnovers. The Baltimore Ravens, that 15-16, and 16, the Jets and the Cleveland Browns, absolutely. <laughs> the, the, the Ravens DST will be just as responsible for championships, is, in my opinion, as Lamar Jackson. Is that a future stack that we should be considering? <laughs> quarterback and defense. Like the same team's quarterback. Because it's like it one gets you sometimes. up. Sometimes. I would not have done that with Mahomes in Kansas City last That's year. That's fair. That's There's fair. just so, mu so many more intricacies with what that represents. You can get – I mean, the Chiefs have been ahead of people for two straight seasons, but if you don't have a pass rush or if you can't get there – it doesn't equate to fantasy and, value. And they, the Rams traded away Marcus Peters <laughs> for peanuts and then paid and the iron price to get Jalen Ramsey. Marcus Peters is playing freaking great, and Jalen Ramsey is tilting trying to fight fans in the stands. Yeah, it was not It was not a good day for <laughs> the Rams. The, the one thing I do say, though. Like, and they're now 6-5. and five. I want they are 6-6, six and six, I believe. 12 weeks. Maybe they've had a bye. You are probably right. They, uh, <laughs> er, in fact, everybody has had a bye. Yes. Week. So uh, the one thing I do want to remember because I, I liked I, hearing him <laughs> work <laughs> through it all uh, audibly, though that yes. was good. Um, you did make me question myself for a moment. Well, I'm thinking of fantasy records, right? Sure. Yeah. Fantasy records, you'd be six and six. Or yeah. But, but anyway. the Rams go to Arizona next week. Arizona off the bye. It's going to be a yeah an interesting game. So. I remember in the off season we talked a lot about the Rams' losses on the offensive line, and I I actively, consciously remember making the decision to trust McVay over the problems. And I believe I said that on the show is like these could be real, real problems, but I'm going to trust that Sean McVay, who at that time had only shown us an ability to overcome whatever scheme problems, whatever right. issues, I mean, minus would, the Super Bowl. Minus one game, two games if you include the Bears. But yes, and and I made that choice, and it's just one of those things for f you know future fantasy decisions in the off season when you see devastating losses to offensive lines. This, I mean, that really matters. You you can't just overcoach a terrible offensive line. Yeah, Goff had a a handful of really good throws, darts, and they all came with a clean pocket and set feet and driving the ball downfield. This is not the same Rams. You cannot move forward in your fantasy decision making on the concept that this will be the week they'll become the old Rams because we're twelve weeks in. Except for this, week. I say, but granted, this week is is pretty nice. It's pretty nice, but I think maybe the ceiling isn't the ceiling anymore. Is, sure, is the point. Uh, you can always you can always make streaming decisions and start decisions based on situation. But you follow us on Twitter. Follow Mike at FF Hitman. Jason is at Jason FFL. I'm at Andy Holloway. And the show is at the FF Ballers. So much to get into. The Megalodon is tomorrow. You do not want to miss it. It is a smorgasbord of yeah. sorts. What is that? The the Thanksgiving Day um, thing that sits on the table that you see uh, in all the pictures? Uh, it's corn something. It's a Shoot. corn something? It's just Shoot. Cap. Oh, I gosh. have no idea what you guys are talking uh, about. Judge Giamatti, do you know what I'm talking about? Cornucopia? Cornucopia. Ah. Thank you. Yeah. I, all I could think of was Capricorn, and I knew that was not correct. No. Corn on the cob. Yes, yeah, corn on the copy. I was going to say it's, like, it's the cornucopia. Cornucopia. Of your week, but it's really that's really not a phrase. This um, is, do this people is, still have those? Well, I don't. I don't know. Do people ever have those except for in pictures? Is that just a like a a tube that you put like squash into? I mean, oh. that's what I'm picturing it. And who eats squash? You don't oh, like some bad people. Ugh, Wait, bad, you both hate squash. Bad people it's, eat squash. Now, is that go for the like the marshmallow yams? You're out on those. Yeah. I'm yes, out. I'm out on all sweet that's potatoes. A really, I, that's a all squash. That's a super wrong take. Mm. No, two on one. Uh, Judge Giamatti, are you, you guys cool stay with out of the marshmallow yams? Nah, I'm not oh, into that. Oh, good man. 
Uh, cornucopia. You're more of a cheese sandwich for Thanksgiving guy. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I can't wait for Jack in the Box. Uh, oh, a gosh. symbol of plenty consisting of a goat's horn overflowing with flowers, fruit, and corn. Yeah, that's tomorrow's show. It's an overflowing <laughs> goat's horn of information. Right. So you'll want to get Thank good you, sleep tonight. It's you not just it. it's not just us that need to get to bed early. You need to prepare your body. <laughs> Soul and spirit. That's right. Wake up, have a nice breakfast, stretch your ears out. Definitely start the day off with coffee. <laughs> You're going to need it. Yeah. The episode will likely come out just a bit later than it's been coming out because we'll be recording it. We'll be recording it during that time. All right. Let's get into some news. News and notes from around the league presented by Sleeper. Welcome back, Andy Dalton. Dalton to start week 13. <laughs> I love it. Like, we now need, that they've established first round pick, we, uh, or I mean number one pick. We need to see what we have in Ryan Finley. We've seen enough. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> and now it's like, okay, we've pretty much got that number one locked up. Our new goal is one win. We don't want to go in winless, so Dalton, you're back in. It's 100% what it is, yes. A.J. Green still day-to-day. Probably going to stay that way. I doubt he plays. Frank Reich confirming that Marlon Mack will not play in week 13. <sighs> Jonathan Williams will get another shot. I that's, I firmly believe that will be his opportunity. Yes, 100% agree. I believe he plays Tennessee, though. So the matches, I'm, it's, I'm absolutely it's, it's, it's still... A, no, no, I'm going to play him. I'm just saying, if you were expecting Jonathan Williams to come out for his third, out of nowhere, for his third 100-yard rushing game, I think that's a mistake to expect that. James Conner says it'll be a little longer before he's ready to play. Benny Snell, you need to add him. Yes. Benny Snell with, what, 60%, 70% of uh, rushing attempts last week. Over 20 carries, almost 100 yards. You've got to add Benny Snell. Andy Reid says he is optimistic about Tyreek Hill coming back in week 13 against the Raiders. Oh, please. LaShawn Great. McCoy also not in the league's concussion protocol. We do not have any update on Damian Williams that I've seen yet. The update will come today. The only day that they were in there with media access, they were not asked about Damian Williams. But remember, he injured his ribs in the last game. I would assume, just based on the timeline and the injury, that he would be good to go. But that is... Worth noting, this is the waiver wire show, so maybe if Shady is out on waivers or Damian Williams oh, yeah. or uh, Daryl Williams, you, you you take a look. All right. We don't know whether David Njoku will be active. It's too early to say, according to Freddie Kitchens. I've been down this road before. It was called, called Chris Herndon. It was called Chris Herndon. Hey, this was uh, unfortunate. Hunter Renfro yeah. broke a rib, punctured his lung. Uh, do we know what the long-term prognosis here is, Mike? He's Some not... talk about him not playing the rest of the season. Yeah, I can't imagine he will be back for – he'll be on IR. But, he, I mean, long-term, he'll be fine. He'll he'll recover from this, but not yeah, He's this not year. expected to practice today. And then <laughs> <laughs> Chase Edmonds will play in week 13. Oh, boy. It's one of the reasons we said you could drop David Johnson if you oh needed to. Not a, boy. Not a must drop, but you can drop. No oh, man, this is where David Johnson comes out after the bye. He's fully healthy. Rawr. I mean, this this is a mess now. If you had, if all three are active and ready to go, is it still Kenyon Drake? Yep, it is. Okay. I mean, if you're choosing between the three, they, it is for me. Yeah, if you're making a fantasy, cho- I'm just if you're making a fantasy choice right now, you I would go with Kenyon Drake, the guy who's been the starter and has been do, playing very well. Just saying it. Oh, I would. It gets. I, I think it gets messy. Yeah, I would wince. I would wince during the selection process. I would probably wrinkle my face a bit. Mm. It it won't be great. And then Devonta Freeman is going to resume practicing. They do play on Thursday, right, Brooks? <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, which the uh, the international sound of a Thursday is well this Thursday the gobble. Yes. News and notes is always brought to you by the Sleeper app. Go ahead and grab it. Don't miss any of the latest fantasy football news. Let's get into some very important waiver discussion. Put me in, coach. All right. We are past trade deadlines. We are nearly into the fantasy playoffs. For many of you, this will be your final opportunity to secure a spot. On your journey for a Foot Clan title. Now, 
some of the questions that you have aren't just going to be who to sign, but it's going to be who to drop. And so uh, we have been uh, conscientious of that and, you know, put the word out on socials, some of your bigger drop candidates, willingness to drop them. So let's go ahead and get into the wide receiver position. Everybody's through the buy now. Let's get into the probably own but need to check category. If for some reason Devontae Parker is out there, his schedule is juicy. Also, if he is, shame on you. Because yes. we've we've been saying that Devontae Parker for about six straight weeks. Yeah, the twenty five percent of leagues are the twenty five percent that don't listen to the fantasy yeah. footballers. I'd be pretty content with seventy five percent of people listening to the show. <laughs> That would be all great. Fantasy we players. are content. I don't think we're there. <laughs> well, it's not. of all. You just need one from every league, right? One from 75% of leagues would qualify. Oh, uh, yeah, that's true. That's true. But sure tell, your, tell, tell your friends. Tell your league mates. <laughs> uh, Challenge yourself. Other players to look at. Debo Samuel, three straight games of, of high-quality performances. He does have Baltimore this week, but I don't know. There's some other players that you probably would rather – You'd probably rather roster Debo than Juju Smith Schuster. Yes. <sighs> yeah. Juju Juju you can drop. <clears throat> like uh, Juju, What about Mike Williams? I think you drop Mike Williams now. Yeah, I'm perfectly fine dropping him. He gets to take on Denver this week, which is not the the best matchup. But he just he's not coming through. The, those 10 touchdowns of last year are in the distant mirror. Mike Williams the mirror Juju's, is so far away. Juju yes. Smith Schuster. Have you ever tried to look in a mirror that's far away? No, you can't even see nothing. Yeah, yeah, it's hard. It's like it's it's twice as far. You're twice as far. Objects as, is as how it, is much how smaller. Um, all I think of is Jurassic Park. When I see a mirror, <laughs> when you see a mirror, all you think yeah, of is that's Jurassic it. Park. That's it. Wait, all. No, when mirrors? I hear that phrase, the, okay. the objects in mirror. Oh. When you when you say that phrase. <laughs> I just think about being eaten by a tyrannosaurus. Every Anasaurus. morning I wake up, I look at myself was, in the mirror. I was mirror brushing my think, teeth, and I was like, what, what would the Tyrannosaurus be doing right now? Imagine if I was brushing my teeth and I was a T-Rex. I couldn't even reach my <laughs> mouth. Spared no expense. No arms. <laughs> um, yeah, Juju Smith-Schuster, Mike Williams. I think these are guys that you don't need to drop. You can drop. They are officially streaming options. So in the right matchup, you stream them. I don't think either has a great matchup this week. Um, Do you drop Brandon Cooks to sign Devontae Parker or Debo Samuel? Devontae Parker, For yes. Parker, yeah. Debo Samuel, no. I can agree I with that. I would much rather have Cooks against Arizona um, than I would rather have Debo Samuel against Baltimore. Would you drop uh, Brandon Cooks or any of the Rams wide receivers for handcuffing and things like that if you didn't think you were going to play them? It's a tough week. To say you're not going to play them. Because you're mean, looking so micro, right? You're looking at this yes, week only. Yes, I'm looking at the fact that, like, you know, Jared Goff was horrendous and terrible, and he's going to be dropped if he was rostered, and he was he's out there on waivers, and I would play him this week. You know, I, I made that mistake when he was terrible earlier in the year, and then he was playing a hapless Atlanta Falcons defense, and I didn't play him when he was great. I mean, the, the, the defense of the Cardinals won't be able to stop, you know. Yeah this match yeah we will have full stream ahead and our offense versus defense streamers later today all right main waiver wire pickups guys that are available that you can look to and again you're looking in that micro time frame if you need a win you got to look at this week's matchup russell gage plays new orleans that's a thanksgiving day game last week he was eight for 76 i imagine new orleans is going to be scoring in this game against Atlanta. So I would imagine Russell Gage pushes the 7 to 10 target range again. Do you believe that? And does that make him a potential flex play on Thanksgiving? I think he's a decent pickup on a short week. Where I haven't seen an update on Julio Jones. His He'll, this, he, this is just vintage Julio Jones. This is what he does in this time of the year. He, he goes out. He Unfortunately, we didn't get the big game against Tampa Bay, but he gets banged up. He goes in and out of the lineup the entire game. Well, if he's and in and out of the, the lineup the entire game, then Russell Gage has momentary Okay, benefit. Just, just say, like, this is what Julio will do. He will play and be in and out of the matchup the whole week. Well, independent of Julio, Mike, are you looking at Gage this week against New Orleans? <sighs> uh, I mean, it's it's tough because like the Saints – they're they're very strange defense. They're a good defense, but they are giving up a, a lot of points to the slot wide receivers. And the past couple of weeks, they've been giving up points to the wide receiver in general. Uh, 
I most, mostly do to Marshawn Lattimore being out, and you have to shuffle things around. So my, I, it'll it'll depend on Lattimore's health for me. My favorite wide receiver pickup of of this week, and it's not so much for the microcosm of a one week pickup, but I think he's just a really valuable player that wouldn't be on waivers if it wasn't for the concussion history he's been going through. Yeah, but it's Sterling Shepard. Sterling Shepard's available in half of the leagues out there. I mean, he, he <laughs> his last four games started. He's got nine targets in each of those games. Now, this last week was poor. He had nine targets, had 15 yards. But he has had plenty of valuable weeks this season when he's been in. It's hard to remember them because he's been out so much with concussion. He does carry that risk. But a guy who is essentially the 1A or 1B of an offense who has a very good schedule coming up after this week is shouldn't be on waivers. I'd rather have him than, than Juju as an example. Philadelphia, Miami for the playoff weeks with Washington in week 17. Cole Beasley, I think some Cole Beasley truthers thought he was disrespected. I failed to mention him in the studs yesterday. He deserved it. Six for 76 and a touchdown on nine targets against Denver. Beasles, do you want to pick him up? Oof. Ultimate revenge game. Against he, Dallas. He gets to play Dallas with the spotlight on as, as an island game. Uh, he's... He's a fine roll of the dice. He's actually had at least a handful of really, I imagine really the, productive games. The games he's scored in. Has uh, he had any fantasy productive games outside of the touchdown scoring weeks? Yeah, I mean, like he's got a week of four for seventy four, seven for seventy five, four okay. for eighty three. Like he he's been very consistent. He hasn't had any explosive games, but I don't think you're you're not expecting explosive scoring from Cole Beasley. You're just you're hoping for a a good PPR option. He's uh, your Cole, second flex to get you 10 points. Sure. It, it, Cole Beasley and Russell Gage are, are pretty close options for me. I'm very interested in Robbie Anderson for this week. Yes. He's about 50% on. They play Cincinnati. You just watched James Washington, who may be in this category as well. You just watched him make uh, DBs and safeties on Cincinnati look foolish I like it because I think Andy Dalton is so far and away better than Ryan Finley and Tyler Boyd. We saw him reemerge last week. So Dalton should be able to do some things against this Jets defense at home. So Robbie Anderson is very, very interesting. He has and Miami the following week as well. And if someone let him go and gave up, you're not going to play him in week 16 against Baltimore, but you like him these next two. I think he's a fine flex play this week with upside. And, and on top of that, just the Jets – offense and Sam Darnold in particular they are they're playing much better I think Sam Darnold's coming off of three straight games as a top 12 quarterback and part of that is for us because of Robbie Anderson no question no question yeah there's there's a couple more guys this is a week where I I feel like there are five or six decent pickups at wide receiver none of them are so outlandishly above the others it really depends if you're looking for a a start this week, Robbie's great versus a Sterling Shepard. If you're looking for a good piece in a deeper league, Sterling Shepard would be great. Jay, would would you rather roster Sterling Shepard, who like I'm not really excited to play him against Green Bay. What if Golden Tate's out? Right now he's in concussion it's, protocol. It's it's far more interesting. But the Philadelphia matchup is not as juicy as it used to be early on in the year. They're much healthier. Their, their defense, their is, defense playing is, great. is playing much better. So Agreed. would you would you rather hold on to Sterling Shepard because we're looking at fourteen fifteen, or would you go after AJ Brown for who gets uh, he gets to play Oakland and Houston in weeks fourteen fifteen? Yeah, I would still stick with the targets. I'm I'm okay. going with Sterling Shepard, who's averaging you know nine targets a game versus the the four targets. A AJ Brown could clearly have the big blow up games, but uh, the, I mean, look, the playoff schedule. If you're talking about being Eagles, Giants, Redskins, that's fantastic. If you're in week 17, it's the Eagles again. Uh, but, you know, 14, 15, 16, it's a pretty, pretty good schedule. But the the other guys I wanted to bring up, um, McCall Hardman, he is interesting to me always. Because, you know, even if he's out there for 10 snaps, you could end up with a good game. If you go look at McCall Hardman's game log and just – Ask how often is he having a really decent fantasy game versus a bust, and he's got two. He's got two different games where he's negative, but in general, he has had 
a lot of really good games. But then you throw in the factor of like, okay, the Col- the, 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 the Chiefs, they're optimistic that Tyree Kill is back. Well, that's great, but what if he's not? Or what if he is and then he pulls it again? I mean, th- there is an added level of benefit to having McCall Hardman, who is a obviously monstrous play, and it's in a good matchup against Oakland. So he's one guy, and the other guy I wanted to bring up that would complete every wide receiver I care about this week is Nikhil Harry. Can I interest He's, you? I have no it's, way. It's no tough. way. No way. Zero. K- K- Houston, Kansas City, Cincinnati. Those are his next three games. Yeah, but it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I mean, you you shouldn't. I think that that's one of those ones where you should be. I mean, why not say Jacoby Myers based on the fact that Philip Dorsey. I mean, Myers had a plenty of targets in this game. Productive. It's just. We need to hold our horses on Nikhil Harry. This has not been a – Tom Brady has not been putting together impressive passing performances. Uh, outside of Julian Edelman, you haven't had consistency at the position. You don't know if Dorsett's coming back or he's not coming back. I, I have no interest. I mean, he had one catch. It was a touchdown, but it was one for ten on four targets. So at this point in the season, there's too much on the line for my fantasy team to put anything on Nikhil Harry. What would it take – to be in if he comes out this week and has you know seven for yeah 92 oh, volume. And a touchdown oh volume it would do it yeah okay. massive volume but i i would put my money on three or fewer catches in the, uh, this week i will make a dollar bet <laughs> you said your money i want a dollar riding on it i got over three catches this week for a dollar for one dollar High stakes. If you're done right, cash. No checks. Um, no personal money orders or anything of that nature. Randall and no Cobb. Coins Randall either. Cobb has been really good. And he's the only other name I want to bring up. He has Buffalo on Thanksgiving. He was four for 86 against New England last week. He seems to be establishing himself with Dak Prescott. And, you know, we know that Amari can leave at any time. Do you have interest in Randall Cobb? I mean, I think he's a better play. Anytime, been a lot of these guys this week. Anytime I can play someone uh, over Amari Cooper from the same team, I like it. <laughs> so you'd play Randall Cobb over Cooper? Yeah, look, your point, Andy, is is right. He's got 307 yards in his previous three games. He's been playing very well, and uh, I, I definitely believe that he he's someone that should be rostered. My only worry with him is... You've got a bad schedule here with Buffalo and Chicago. All these names, I'll bring up a few other drop candidates. Like Josh Gordon, you can move on from. Yes, drop. You move on from Josh him. Gordon. Very yeah. limited snap percentages. Uh, you can you can move on from the the Josh Reynolds that you might have been rostering. Some of these players, if you don't need them this week, it's it's go time. You got to make the yeah. playoffs. Yeah, get the guys that matter. All right, before we talk about the all important running back position. Guys, you're losing your hair like mm. like moi. Mm. We have an answer. It's Ro- Ro- at least Roman has the answer. We've got the answer. Who has the answer is Roman. They're here to help you. They can do it discreetly. They do it from your home on a computer on a mobile device. It is very easy to help stop hair loss and in certain cases help regrow it with FDA approved. Treatments. That's something a lot of people don't know. There are actual FDA-approved hair loss treatments. You connect with a U.S. licensed physician for free online, and if the doctor decides medication is right for you, Roman will deliver it right to your door in discreet packaging with free two-day shipping. Go to GetRoman.com slash footballers to start your free online visit if you want to stop or prevent hair loss. Roman gets members started with a free online visit and free two-day shipping. Visit GetRoman.com slash footballers. That's GetRoman.com slash footballers for a free visit to get started. GetRoman.com slash footballers. We also invite you to check out JoinTheFoot.com, our fantasy football community. We just added a Discord server. If you know what that is, then you're excited. If you don't, <laughs> you'll be. Excited. there's other cool things that you can check it's out. It's a giant live Foot Clan-only chat. With tons of rooms. It's really cool. Yeah. So check that out. Join the foot.com. Running back discussions. And oh, baby. Tough decisions. You can't just dig in and play the same guys each and every week if they're not performing. And so you look the way of the, you know, I think one of the biggest discussions to be had on the drop uh, consideration list is somebody like David Montgomery. Montgomery is the most enigmatic situation that a fantasy owner can face. 
amazing matchup on Thanksgiving. So you imagine he's in your lineup this week, but the the production from David Montgomery in this offense is so terrible. You have to start mentioning it in the context of Kalen Balage. <laughs> you have to start mentioning it in the context of it doesn't matter if you get a lot of snaps right now. No breakaway plays, no involvement in the passing game, no two-minute drills. Tariq Cohen's out there on all of those. It is not a good situation. In the last two He's weeks, got a bum ankle. to speak to your point, Andy, uh, this would be a 16-game pace of 216 carries. That's that's okay. All right, I'll take it. For 424 yards. I reject that. Yeah, 1.96. That That is very Kalen Balazs-esque. The one difference is what Mike is saying, which is, he has a bum ankle the last two weeks. I mean, two weeks ago, we weren't even sure he was going to play because the ankle roll happened in practice. So he was out there, obviously looked very limited. This past week against a bad Giants team, he still sucked. So at what point do you have the confidence? I mean, this week, do you say, well, his ankle's fully healed it's now. I've got to roll him back out there. It's not the ankle. That's wrong. It's just not. His only productive games are the ones he's fallen into the end zone from the one-yard line. Before the ankle, he was 17 for 60 against the 32nd ranked Detroit run defense. He did have he has one big game. To be out fair, of, that's way better than 14 for 31. Sure, 14 for 40 the week before. Yeah, you're not happy with yeah. any of. Those. I mean, he has one big game this year in terms of yardage. Otherwise, he's peaked at 67 rushing yards on the ground. 62, 67, 53, 25. Woof. All I'm saying is that more often than not, you're buying a lie. With David Montgomery. You're buying the preseason hype. You're buying Matt Nagy getting the offense running. And so, like, Benny Snell is in my lineup over David Montgomery sure. so quickly this week. No doubt about it. But the question is, do you drop him? That's right. And look at the upcoming schedule for David Montgomery to make that decision. You've got Detroit. And if you don't play him, you've got Dallas, Green Bay, Kansas City. Well, Green Bay and Kansas City are pretty good for running back matchups. Dallas... Uh, they're they're okay. David Montgomery is a guy where I'm going to hold because while he hasn't been efficient, I mean, well, you, you've got 15 carries a week at running back and injuries and other considerations. Let's put it to the test, though. Are you going to drop him for Benny Snell this week? I would rather have Benny Snell than David Montgomery, so yes. Would you drop him for Rashad Penny? No. Who, who just had 65% uh, of the carries for Seattle. Rashad Penny is a lot of people's number one waiver pickup this week. Makes a lot of sense. He had his breakout game. He had more carries uh, th this past week than Chris Carson did, and he was explosive, looked great. Chris Carson had the double fumble rough, so maybe this is the week Rashad Penny takes over. I believe in what you said, Andy, yesterday, which is – the Seahawks aren't just moving on from Chris Carson. The 9-2 and two Seahawks, who Chris Carson has been the centerpiece of that offense, him and obviously Russell. The, the discussion there is it's difficult because would you rather have potentially half of Seattle's offense or uh, the majority of carries in Chicago? That's fair. That's and, fair because when you say it like that, I'm, a, I'm an easy Seattle side. Well, and, and I also am looking at this from the context of do I want to win my league? What is my best shot of winning my league? Is it on the back of David Montgomery no. having an emergence, or is it on the chance that Rashad Penny does? Because if Carson fumbles one more time... All right, you got me. I'm Penny over Montgomery. Right, you got me. Give me hard. another name. Give me another name. Bo Scarborough. No, oh, now I'm now I'm 18 back. for 98 last week. Yeah, I'll and play a, and a I'll, fumble, right? David Montgomery had dreams of being Bo Scarborough. I'll play Bo over David Montgomery. So would you drop Montgomery? Yeah, I'm 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 on the drop Montgomery. Like it's David Montgomery right now is Kalen Balage. And That's I am the truth. And I am one hundred percent I am dropping Kalen Balage. If my opponent wants to pick up Balage and play them against me, please, please do that. Kalen Balaj is the dollar you drop out of your pocket, and the person behind you says, "Did you? Is this yours?" And you don't act like you know what he's talking about. <laughs> nope, never I never seen had it. Before. I never had him on my team. Don't I mean, don't spend it all in one place. I still would prefer to not drop him in the sense that you know, if I've got a uh, you know a, a fifth wide receiver on my roster that's maybe a, you know a, a chance of doing something, I would rather have the running back. But I totally get your point, and it's fair. And if you're out there and you're looking at your roster and you don't know who to drop, 
and you feel like you need to pick someone up, but you feel like you can't drop David Montgomery, this conversation has led you to know you can drop David Montgomery. Now, Sonny Michelle kind of reemerged last week. He had 20 carries. The, was that a lot to do with the weather in your mind? Yeah. Because James White hasn't been utilized, and yet, you know, it's always game, game script dependent. But 20 carries, 85 yards, 4.2 a carry, no touchdowns for Sonny Michelle. Is he somebody that you – he's got to be somebody you just hang on to. Yeah, I, I think he is someone you hang on to because in a pinch, you can always start him. Or bad weather games are coming. Yeah, more bad weather games are coming. And, and the, the reality is you talk about, well, David Montgomery's only had a good game when he's fallen into the end zone. And that, that you could say the same thing about Sonny Michelle. The difference being – Sony Michelle probability has a lot more odds of falling into the end zone, and it's one of those things where when you happen to get that game right, sure, you put Sony out there. Maybe Michelle has only scored in four games. How many times has he scored though? I mean, because he, doesn't he have he, multiple touchdown games? He has the one week where he he had the three touchdowns. Other than that, one touchdown against Washington, one against the Jets, and one against Miami. Just nice to see twenty carries. I mean, twenty sure, twenty yeah, carries yes. this past week puts him in the not drop category for me. By the way, I mean, when you talk about these things, even conceding, if you concede David Montgomery's a drop, that doesn't make it easy. That sucks. Yep. Because he's had every opportunity here, and this is where we're at. And now last week you had a couple goal line opportunities not go his way too. Trubisky ran one in and just stinks. All right, other other players, you know, if Jonathan Williams is out there, don't ignore him. My goodness, 26 yeah, for 104 last up. week. But Kansas City is the next big situation. We, I, they are a high priority for me, actually. With, with Damian Williams, we don't know what's happening. But if you saw the shot, he went down. He was writhing in pain. And Shady McCoy is the primary guy to pick up. But I am also very interested in Daryl Williams, who has turned into a, the third down back for Kansas City they get to play Oakland the matchups after that are a bit more concerning but if, if you're looking at this week I'm very very interested in picking up Shady well I I was gonna say how do you make that decision if if you believe that Darrell Williams is the third down back he also out carried LaShawn McCoy by four in the last game that they played who McCoy, do you prioritize I, it's still McCoy for me uh, McCoy also had I mean he had the fumble and he and then he had the weird was he concussed was he not concussed so he he had his own injury th things to deal with but i like you i said prefer I, I, pref I, That's all prefer I'm McCoy, I do prefer I do prefer McCoy but i'm if if Damian Williams is out this week i'm very happy to play Daryl. yeah i prefer uh, just throwing this since we're talking about the different waiver options i like Benny Snell more than more than either of those i would rather have because I think they, I mean, we've got to project this now. I think Damian Williams is probably involved. I think that it could go Shady's way. It could go Daryl Williams' way, even if Damian is out. So far this season, playing with Kansas City running backs has sucked for fantasy. That's not to say that Kansas City running backs haven't had good games. It's just you're not getting it right. You're, so, Benny Snell, I'm very confident he has a huge workload this week. Can Cleveland shut, it, shut him down? Maybe, maybe not. I think Benny Snell's a guy I want to roll with. All right, uh, let's look at tight ends. Disappointing week for Jacob Hollister this past week, but should, well, he should be a player that you bring up in the hold-on-to category. And it should not have been disappointing. There was a play where Russell had rolled out to his right. Jacob Hollister was, in fact, building an entire Abercrombie in the end zone because there was no one around him. He had the boards out and everything. And the, the frame was up. Yeah. He was about to do the drywall. Mm -hmm. and, like the sign guy was coming through, and then Russell Wilson Airmailed him. decided to throw the, like, the worst pass I've ever seen Russell Wilson throw. So Hollister is perfectly fine. Well, in, in Seattle's offense was just a little out of sorts passing-wise in this past week altogether. One catch for Tyler Lockett, drops for Metcalf. Hollister, you know, the tight end landscape is gross. Yeah, so Hollister bank on is solid. It was just was a bad game. But I think that'll be the question because one of the things you can do so easily at the tight end position more than anywhere else is ping pong from mm -hmm. bad week drop pickup, bad week drop pickup. I think Hollister's worth the hold. Do you, it seems like we all agree yes. on that. 100%. Yeah, we we all agree. If you go look at the consistency charts and switch it over to tight ends on the fantasyfootballers.com, you'll see that there is a lot of back and forth with success. So if you're dropping after every bad tight end game, 
then you're not getting you know those follow up decent games. You got to stick with whoever has good quarterback play and has enough targets to be involved. Speaking of targets to be involved, what about Jack Doyle, who outside of the goose, he's had some good weeks recently. Um, Eric Ebron now is having both of his feet removed. So <laughs> Jack Doyle's the primary tight end now, not not necessarily splitting those routes with Eric Ebron. Are you interested there? Yeah. I'm I not – I mean – I'm interested. I'm a realist, though. This offense is predicated on the running game. So I am. I would be willing to throw him in there. He's in the category of like, all right, I'll take my shot this week. But the upside is not tremendous with a player of Jack Doyle's caliber. That's just, you know, I, I think I would probably end up in another boat. I'd be. I'd play Noah Fant over over Jack Doyle. I'm, I'm fine with Noah Fan, but but a guy like Darren Fells, would you rather play Jack Doyle or Fells? Uh that's that's close. I mean, okay. that's a toss up cuz Fells has got to compete with Aikens and you know it's yeah, those are both options. I'm probably moving away from both of them. I'd rather okay. rather play some higher upside athletes than I would Jack Doyle personally, but he's he's in that category. Kyle Rudolph. He, he it, it's tough to to have full confidence. I mean, Kyle Rudolph has been, has been fantastic for fantasy purposes, but you can see a strong correlation. Adam Thielen's been out, and that's when Kyle Rudolph has been producing, catching touchdowns. With Adam Thielen, ex we expect him back this week. I haven't seen any news to the contrary that, that Minnesota is expecting Adam Thielen to be back. Th that makes me far less confident in Kyle Rudolph. And, and I'm with you, Andy. Like Noah Fant is still very interesting to me. Yeah, it was 3 for 14. That was against Buffalo. We talked about how the, that matchup has been horrifically bad for tight ends all year long, and Noah Fant is still getting targets. So I, I would I would hold on to Noah Fant, much like I'm He's holding on. He's got a 25% target yeah. share since Sanders left. What, much like I'm holding on to Jacob Hollister, I'm still holding on to Noah Fant. Now, more than any of these guys. Ryan Griffin. Well, sure. Ryan Griffin is absolutely someone that should – should be rostered and in there. The schedule for Darnold, the Jets' offense getting rolling. Ryan Griffin is absolutely in there. I would agree with that. More than anyone other than Ryan Griffin that I think needs to be brought up because he had a horrendous game, but kind of not really, is Dallas Goddard. Ah, uh, yes. Dallas Goddard had eight targets again. Yeah, he ended up with 32 yards and a fumble, so for fantasy it was horrific. Sure. But the targets have been there. The offense is, you know, I think good enough, especially this week against Miami, where I would stay with Dallas Goddard. I'm not going to just be so mad at the bad fantasy week. This is that Hollister situation. Um, you know, I, I would, I, I just believe that the talent, the targets, the matchup, they're all there for Dallas Goddard this week. And as I always say, you always have the potential when yep. he's on your roster to end up with a super elite tight end should something happen to Zach Ertz. I would order these guys, Jacob Hollister, but I get it. He's probably not in your waiver wire pool. Then I would go Goddard, Griffin, Fant, Doyle of the guys we've been talking about. Yeah, I would go Hollister, Griffin, Goddard, Fant. Griffin's matchups against the Bengals in Miami are pretty juicy. Yeah, and he's uh, less owned than Dallas Goddard sure. right now. I think both those guys are, are – they have the opportunity to be a focal point in these upcoming weeks. Anybody else you want to talk to at tight end? No. Please, Talk, talk no. to, talk about, any of those things? I would rather talk to them than talk about them. All right. Full stream ahead. All right, quarterback streamer time. Boy. I've got two. Yeah. You have two streamers. I have two streamers. Uh, all right. Well, uh, let me let me get this out of the way because it's not going to be easy to say. Okay. My streaming quarterback is... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Introducing Jared Garth. Yeah, you know, part of streaming a quarterback is not burying your team, which has not been how you associate Jared Goff, but I don't know how he doesn't put up 20 fantasy points against Arizona this week. Arizona has given up the two greatest uh, weeks for Jimmy Garoppolo. 
you have a healthy Robert Woods, Cooper Cup, and Brandon Cooks, and the Cardinals couldn't guard one of them, much less all three. I just don't understand how that doesn't happen. The, there's only a, there's only two weeks that the Cardinals have have not given up a top ten option. It just makes Jared Goff a put him in your lineup if you need a streamer. Your opponent will think that you've done them a favor, and then Goff will have a good week. Yeah, and look, Jimmy Smith, Marcus Peters, uh, you know th there are so many great secondary players for the Ravens. That's what Jared Goff just played. There are not those for the Cardinals. And this sure. this is not going to be the same. Uh, this is not Andy saying the Rams are back and they're going to be this unbelievable offense. But the Cardinals can't stop what the Rams currently have as far as on that side of the ball. Um, I'm going to follow that up with a very, very similar option. Someone that sucked this last week and has super disappointed this year but it's Carson Wentz as one of my two. The the Eagles dropped Jordan Matthews. This is a great indication that either Alshon Jeffrey and or Nelson Aguilar could both be back and healthy. And while the Eagles aren't what we hoped that they were, this is the Dolphins matchup. And they're not going to have a bad offensive game, assuming that Alshon, this is predicated on Alshon being back. But if Alshon is out there against the Dolphins I, with Lane Johnson back now, I believe that you're absolutely fine with Carson Wentz. So, yes, you can have the floor, Andy. I don't need the floor. I just need to talk to you as a friend. I would just be afraid. I would be a little You'd bit You'd be afraid. more afraid of Wentz than of Goff. I would. Okay, tell me why. Because I don't want to mess with what I saw last week from Carson Wentz. You don't know Alshon's back. He's dealing with an injury to his hand, which could, uh, you know, further complicate the the potential. I just I'm a little bit gun shy on that side. I have this decision to make in listener league, uh, the Carson Wentz decision, and you know, I would be trying to find another option until until I can't. Okay, I suppose. well, I mean, are you? If Alshon's out, do you change your opinion? Yes, yes. That's so what just I said. one Predic player, no, one player makes it. He difference. needs. He needs a, a. Yeah, it's it's not. It's more than one player because you have secondary wide receivers already injured. You need a wide receiver one, and he is that. Um, so if Alshon is back and Lane Johnson is there to help protect him against the Dolphins, I do think that you're going to be absolutely fine. Um, now, the hand, the hand is legit. Obviously, if if Wince is missing practices. Whatever, but I think Carson Wentz is fine. If you are opposed to that, my other streaming candidate. Yeah, I wouldn't play Wentz. So you're you're both on the anti Wentz. Yes. Against he, Miami. Car, this this is a anti Wentz take, man. He's been horrifically bad. I know he's been terrible, but look at the four matchups, and then the fact that this weekend no Lane Johnson, no Nelson Aguilar, no Alshon Jeffrey. I mean, what do you want Wentz to he's do? Still he still turned the ball over four times. He's and he's been in plus matchups before earlier in the season and didn't get it done. He played Atlanta week two when you could play literally anyone. You could play Jared Goff against Atlanta. He put up two thirty one and one with two interceptions against at that time, which was the worst pass defense wait, wait, wait. in the NFL. I'm not saying he, he was he was the quarterback ten that week. Yeah, so look that, deeper because he that. had a, okay he had a rushing touchdown right which which really matters. Yeah, Jay, I was a top ten quarterback. He. Why, <laughs> that's a bad dig in, though, because we're not saying that he can't have a good weekend against Miami. I think we're saying, where do you want to put the hopes and yes. dreams of your season? Do you want to put it on maybe the worst quarterback performance of the week with a, a team that's dealing with injuries, four turnovers, a hurt hand? It's just risk aversion. Yes. That, I think that's I, what It's it not is. that he can't dominate Miami. It could happen. But he didn't dominate Atlanta. He finished tenth, and he had to do a rushing. He had to have a rushing touchdown to get to ten. So it's just risk. I, it's just, you can the do what you want. The, sure, the hand is an issue if he's missing practice. Okay, but I I'm, believe I'm told that hands are important for a quarterback. Yes, if if I don't know, if I've Alshon never been is out there. I think that you can absolutely play him against the Miami Dolphins, who are the third worst against quarterback. Everybody has beat them. You know that was Josh Allen's big monster game. Baker, how'd he look? freaking fantastic so that that's my thought 
on the How other side. How did Brian Hoyer look? <laughs> okay, fair. Was, Br- was Baker <laughs> targeting fair. Jordan Matthews? Brian Hoyer Matthews? had a bad game. <laughs> Um, well, Carson Wentz can't target wait, Jordan Matthews. Yeah, Jordan Matthews, Matthews you mean the guy gone. they just cut because Correct. their wide receivers are coming back. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> what do you mean? That's they just, what happened. They got so bad that they had to run Jordan Matthews out there. Exactly. And now they said, oh, thank goodness we can cut him, not for no reason, but because the, the boys are back in town. Oh, give me a break. All right. Let's talk about someone that maybe you'll agree with. I don't know. Ryan Tannehill, last week's, unfortunately, number two quarterback. Thanks, Lamar. Um, he has been great. In fact, a uh, little stat here from JJ Zacharias, a good friend of the so- show. Since Ryan Tannehill became the starter, here is a list of players who have averaged more fantasy points per game. Number one, Lamar Jackson. End of list. That it is Ryan Tannehill. He has not had in six point scoring formats less than 24 fantasy points in a game. I don't love the matchup here against Indianapolis, and I don't expect what we saw this last week to be in the realm of outcomes as in, like, a number two quarterback. But I think he's pretty safe. He's got options. Uh, Ryan Ryan Tannehill, I'm not going to disagree with you. He was my streamer before I changed him to Goff, so I'm, I'm fully on board. What's interesting is he's averaging, like, 40 rushing yards a game, and he scored three times on the ground. So he gives you a little bit more of a baseline than you believe you have, with the average quarterback. There's no reason you can't stream Tannehill. 100% on board with you there. What if he breaks his hand? Well, yeah, I'll be a little more out. <laughs> okay. A little. Or if – how about this? You <laughs> Just replace, a little. Replace his uh, left tackle and then all his receivers with, like, Jordan Matthews, then I'll be more out. But that's my point. His left tackle is in and Jordan Matthews is gone. We're speaking the same language, but not at all. Whenever you're on the razor's edge of – playing a Jordan Matthews capable depth option as your focal point of an offense, you have risk. That's all we're saying. Do you acknowledge that there is tremendous risk, to Carson Wentz? Only you- with the hand. Oh, gosh. Mike. All right. Going to watch him burn this week. Uh, I'm going to play Sam Darnold. Yes. <laughs> against and, the Bengals. Yeah, you have the, I would, the best option. Yes. Uh, Fuckland, we saved the okay. best for last. If you have the choice between everyone mentioned, go Sam Darnold. Yeah, I'm going <laughs> Sam Darnold. It has been turning it on. Uh, lately he's been a, a top option three weeks in a row. The Bengals really, really stink. So it's, it, it's, it's, this one's just easy. Sam Darnold is, is a great streamer this week. Defense versus offense presented by head and shoulders and Walmart. All right. Defensive options. Here's where I can get behind an eagle, or a bunch of them. The defense last week for the Philadelphia Eagles deserved better than what they got from Carson Wentz. They played a very dangerous uh, Seattle offense. They stifled Russell. They stifled Lockett. They are playing at a high level. They need a win. They have an opportunity to win that division still. Their schedule is a cakewalk. Dallas' schedule is difficult. Philadelphia plays Miami. Turnovers, opportunity. I'd play Philadelphia's defense. They're only 40% yeah. on. They're a great streaming option this week. There's oh, only, yeah, because Miami's so bad. There's there's only one week that a defense... Carson Wentz can play on the defense. That's fine. There's only one week a defense against Miami has not been a top 12 option, and that's uh, week 10 when the Colts were 13th. So, yes, it, Ryan Fitzpatrick... Is he like he's playing fun football and pretty playing pretty decent, but he still gets sacked and turns the ball over. My streamer, it's Carolina because they're playing Washington. Oh, yours, is a, yours is my favorite of the whole week, man. You got the best streamers today, Mike. Well, I told he you he got him in before we did. Yeah. <laughs> when you're the first one into the show, Doc, you get the best matchup. He left you with wins. I, and um, when I say Carolina is playing against Washington, let me clarify that Carolina will be playing against Dwayne. Haskins. That's that's the whole clarification. Now, what if that's they all that's needed? What if they can't find him because he's off taking selfies in the crowd, oh, and then dude, Case Keenum gets in? Honestly, one hundred percent. If they if they if Washington came out and said Case Keenum is playing, I would be far more concerned about playing this Carolina defense. You'd be out, but they're not. They're playing Dwayne Haskins, and Carolina is a great play this week. Haskins yeah. is a just a sack he absorber. Is bad. For me, uh, my streaming candidate this week is 
going to be the Green Bay Packers I like this on the road too. against the Giants. Uh, look, Daniel Jones has had his big games, but he's also had plenty of bad games on you know, the season. You go back to week five. There's only been one time that the Giants haven't given up a top 12 defense in that time. So it's a really good streaming matchup where you're going to get some turnovers. And, and Green Bay's defense is good. Yeah, the the especially their passing defense has been pretty good. And Saquon has just not been the Saquon that, you know, you look at this matchup and go, well, maybe Saquon has this great game. But you've kind of been saying that for a while. It's true. It's true. Another uh, little stat nugget that I heard from J.J., if you take out the the explosion, which is a you know, whatever. If you take out Aaron Rodgers' one giant explosion against Oakland, Daniel Jones is a better fantasy quarterback on the year than Aaron Rodgers. Ooh. Yep, makes sense. What if you take out Daniel Jones's big explosion games? Probably like, still better. Like I said, it, it just <laughs> one game made people start Aaron Rodgers for a bunch of other games, and I. I get it. He's Aaron Rodgers. But once again, I'm committed to this plan. Oh, absolutely. You play Rodgers the next two weeks. Yep. And then you you drop – oh, and then you write in. You write into to the league chat. Oh, no. I accidentally dropped Aaron Rodgers. Don't yes. worry. Don't fix this mistake. But he's available. Yeah, make sure everyone knows. <laughs> Isn't Darnold another week 17 drop as well? Like you can ride Darnold as a streamer heading into week 17? I'm not sure what uh, it, I, he, I can look. He does have – his his schedule gets worse. But, Mike, to correct cor to correct you on telling the whole league that Aaron Rodgers is available, that's not what you want to do. Oh. You want to go to whoever your opponent is in that playoff. We can go, oh, crap, man. I accidentally dropped Aaron Rodgers. What do I – you know, and that way oh. he knows. Oh, you, he but, or she. But And then you go, oh, crap, I didn't mean to message it, you. <laughs> yes. Oh, shoot. This wasn't – I meant to yes. talk to the commish. Yes. Yeah, all right, we got there. I, I would go the other route. I would just uh, – I'd lean in. I'd be like, I'm dropping Aaron Rodgers. There's nothing you can Come do about me, it. Bro. He sucks, and then someone would, would want to beat you with him. But uh, to your point, Andy, week 15 and 16, Sam Darnold plays Baltimore and Pittsburgh. Yeah. But so Darnold gets the Bengals and the Dolphins, so he's a fine play for the next couple of weeks. All right, we got a couple minutes. Let's hop into the mailbag. Mailbag. Mailbag, yeah. All right, you can visit the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. You can click the Submit a Question button to send us your question, or you can dial the voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. I just want, I want to say one more thing about Carson Wentz. Oh, good, because that's all I want to talk about. <laughs> and that is that it is in no person's greater interest than mine yeah. to support him He this did week. see the future. I, I, I love Carson Wentz heading into the year. Uh, he was one of my my guys. His team has been decimated. I don't think Alshon fixes everything. I think it's a realism thing of knowing that I, 20 points for Carson Wentz this week is, is, is fine. I mean, he, he, he can get there. But what about it, this is like the Goff situation with the Rams. The, the Eagles' offense isn't what we thought it'd be, and the Rams' offense isn't what we right, thought it'd be. Right, but against Arizona, you could play. What about if he was playing the Giants. It depends on uh, if his hand is hurt and he's got all his receivers and we've seen something. What if he was playing the Redskins? Yeah, the next three weeks. Yes, that's my point. Well, good. Please, Carson, please, please just get it back together. See, I think people need to understand why you're this passionate. What, you want to tell them? We got, got, we got take lock. You want to tell them why? <laughs> we've got, we've call got a doctor. Take lock. <laughs> Hold on. Yes. No, I don't take have lock. I don't have take lock. Here's the truth. I have him in our league of record. I have held him for this time. I don't have take lock. I'm the one that benched Wentz to pick up Tannehill this last week. I wasn't sticking if I had take lock, I would have lost last week and not <laughs> and kept rolling with Carson Wentz. But he didn't have Alshon. The weather was bad. He didn't have Lane Johnson. It's true. Yeah, You're and, so, and, in other words, just so that our listeners really understand, we've gotten a lot of feedback. They love hearing the ins and outs of our big leagues and what puts you on tilt and what gets you uh, excited, named Raheem Mostert. And – you're basically saying, I mean, you've got Tannehill on your roster. I've got Tannehill and Wentz. So you're going to play Wentz. I don't know yet, but stay tuned. 
I will be. I, I like that the two streaming mm. options are the quarterbacks he has. That is. Take lock. Gen- genuinely. <laughs> take <laughs> lock. <laughs> oh. All right. Okay. Cole in East Lansing, Michigan. <laughs> Given the state, <laughs> he's going to be so tilted this week now, regardless. Because this conversation is going to come into his mind when he makes that it's sa- the, No matter that what happens, it's the over. only way that things go well, the only way things go well for me is if I actually start Wentz and he completely balls out over Tannehill, that then I'm happy. Every right. other situation <laughs> that can possibly happen is now a negative. You're 100% right. I hate this sport. Take All right. Uh, <laughs> take block. Take block. It is a good bit. All All right. Right. <laughs> it's not bad. Cole. Given the state of the season for the Falcons, do you go with Julio Jones this week, or I'm sorry, rest of season, or Jarvis Landry rest of season? Wow. That is a really, really tough decision to – man, that's hard. Cleveland's number one wide receiver or Atlanta's number one wide receiver? Thank you, Mike. Ooh, You're just to uh, make the little OB jab. Yes. Ooh, I like that. Um, let, me, let me give you some information here to make this decision. Jarvis Landry's last four weeks, 18, 7, 17, 2. That's his fantasy finishes. Whereas Julio Jones is 32, 20, 30, and 6. So, I And then he has New Orleans. I think that's what – let's look at the schedule then. New Orleans, Carolina, San Francisco, Jacksonville. That's Julio's. For Julio. So 50% of those are like. Um, and then Jarvis Landry has Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, Arizona, Baltimore – uh, I like 50% of I'm those. Gonna, I'm going to go Julio. I'm going to stay with I'm Julio. I'm going to go Julio well. Jones. All right. We worked our way through it. It's take, a, it take lock. <laughs> it's it's legitimately a fair question, though, because Jarvis Landry's been playing great. All right. Here's a here's another very difficult one from Jake in Seattle. State Farm. Hey, ballers. Can I trust Josh Allen in my fantasy playoffs? Mm. At Dallas? No. Baltimore? <laughs> Pittsburgh? New England? For the week seventeen. No, I don't. I, I I don't think that you want to trust him there. When you get into those weeks, right? It, getting to the playoffs, Josh Allen is fine. He's going to be twenty points. But when you get to those weeks and you're in your semifinals and you're in your championship, you're playing against the best. You're playing a, a, against, and you are the best. You need big scores to win a championship. Oh. You don't back your way into a championship. You can back your way into the playoffs. I I am I'm on the side of trusting him. So I think he's safe. Yeah, I mean, I think he's his, a QB he's, five on the year. I think he's got a high floor, but I just don't think against you know Pittsburgh against New England. Well, I, let's put it to the test. Okay, I know because you're going to have if you're going to not play him. Oh, Mike, you got it figured out. No, I'm just saying uh, I I tend to trust him, but week sixteen in New England, no, no way. I I agree. With not that. this time. I agree. Yeah, I agree that you don't play him in, at New England. That seems like. That seems like a very foolish decision. Right. But are you going – if you're not playing Josh Allen, you're pivoting to Streamerville. Right. So then you're making the decision of, you know, am I going to get bigger upside from, you know, would you go Baker, Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, Arizona over Josh Allen? I think that's a fair debate uh, Yeah. if I mean, he was available. I think when I look at it, I'm going to be pairing multiple quarterbacks together. Instead of saying who's got the best of s- schedule the rest of the way – I'm going to be looking for someone who's got the best schedule in, you know, if week 16, maybe you stay with Josh Allen for the next couple weeks, you know, Dallas and maybe Baltimore, Baltimore's getting iffy though, um, you know, but you know, you're going to pivot in week 16. If you get there, have your plans made now. How about Carson Wentz Jim? for the replacement? Carson Wentz, Miami, New York, Washington versus Josh Allen over the next three weeks. Yeah. Take lock. Oh, all right. <laughs> Water bet. That's the best way to make a bet. Take a When No, when you were just saying, yeah, all right, fine. All, all right. right. Thank you for tuning in today. Megalodon tomorrow. Oh. oh. Everyone, everyone get a good night's sleep. I'm going to bed right now. I'm uh, talking to the listeners. Yes. yes. Make sure you're rested. Mm-hmm. Get your uh, – I, I want people – look, I know normally people listen to podcasts in a certain way. It's uh, – we we just got a review on iTunes, which or thank you, Apple Podcast. Appreciate that. And it said, "Look, I love mowing the lawn now. I mow the lawn three times a week. <laughs> I walk around listening to your show. I think that's great and that's funny. And you've got your routines. You work out. You you mow the lawn. You drive to work. 
the megalodon you mm. need to be sitting in a cozy chair you need yeah. the fire going you need some hot chocolate you need to listen as though you're watching something yeah you need to have a book <laughs> in front of you that has or blank you could watch pages it. or you could watch or it on you youtube watch that's it. a good point you could solid sit, yeah. watch it like you listen to something <laughs> <laughs> on youtube.com slash the fantasy football there's something about the transistor radio sitting in front of them that uh, that's what i was visualizing and, and what, like, i i was visual, reading i was it. i was visualizing an empty book where they're just <laughs> staring at blank pages but listening and they're putting it into okay words. but youtube is probably the best route yeah send us your pictures of sitting in a cozy chair with like a blanket on <laughs> with an empty book as you listen that'd be great we want to thank our studio sponsor pristine auction we've got uh very wonderful uh, brooks also searching for the very 55 brooks. range product he failed kenny galladay had a signed jersey oh it's still smooth 56 dollars 36 cents yesterday at pristine auction.com use the code ballers you know get what some uh, memorabilia at least you know at least you know folkland we're not lying on these prices if we were lying brooks would have just said 55, 55. But this was $56.36. This is real life. Someone got that at Pristine Auction. So if Wentz does poorly, I'm right. If he does well, he's my, my guy. Got it. <laughs> got it figured <laughs> you out. You can't stop me no matter who you are. <laughs> See you tomorrow, Take everybody. Care. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.